Hey everyone, Tyler here from Make Magazine. This past weekend, we got to visit 3D Heels here in San Francisco. This is a conference dedicated to exploring the applications of 3D printing in the medical field. Now there's already a ton of really exciting ways people are looking to use 3D printing in the healthcare field. Everything from printing out surgical pre-visualizations to make surgeries easier, to printing organic material. One company, Anatomics, is looking to create customized surgical prosthetics that make a surgeon's job easier, much in the same way that a drilling jig makes a woodworker's job easier. So, Anatomics was the, uh, started the PhD project in 1991, and I um, was one of the first people in the world to join a, a 3D printer and a CT scanner together. And after my PhD finished, the surgeons wanted to have craniofacial reconstructive implants and, and, and biomodels. And so we set up Anatomics in about 1995. And Anatomics is a custom manufacturer of bespoke uh, 3D printed um, device manufacturer. So we, we create individualized implants for people. And now with the uptake of 3D printing technology and the um, improvement in the software and the cloud-based computing, we can create mass customization, which means that we can produce custom implants for just about everybody around the world, potentially, with this technology and eliminate the off-the-shelf and the mass-producing type of implants. So IKEA surgery means that the, um, the surgeons plan the operation, and because we create a customised device or a patient-specific device, we can predict exactly which screws we require to get maximal fixation of the device in the spine, for example. And IKEA surgery means that it's planned out, and we know which each component in the uh, in the construct for, for spinal surgery, for example, is planned so we know exactly how long each screw will be. We've got a custom-made device that fits exactly with the patient. And it eliminates all of the steps of assembly of a device in, in, in the surgery. It makes it so that that assembly is, is obvious and it's sort of like easy for the surgeon to do the operation. So traditionally surgeons have to sort of build devices on the operating table or manufacture a solution as they proceed with the surgery. The more it can be planned out of the OR, it means that we can manufacture the solution just in time at the point of, manif at the point of use and have that device then ready for the surgery, which means that there's a lot more efficiency. So we use the best of all the different 3D printing technologies. We use polymer printing and we use metal printing. We use different types of devices. Um, we use sterilography, selective laser sintering, FDM. So what Anatomics does is we select the best technologies to create the device that's going to be the best for the patient. And we're an open platform business, so we select the right sort of technologies to give us the best possible product and that product is custom or bespoke made for an individual person. I want to apologize for the sound in these interview segments. We had to film them in the sort of happy hour segment of the conference, and things were pretty loud in that room. Anyhow, we also spoke with the co-founder of SE3D, which is a Bay Area company building bioprinters for both the science and education fields. So the main difference with bioprinting versus 3D printing is that instead of printing up plastic materials, we're using a lot of biomaterials. And these biomaterials are compatible with cells. Uh, so the essential component is that we want to use materials where cells can grow and they can proliferate and differentiate in some cases for various tissue engineering applications. Um, there's a variety of materials that you can use uh, to support cell growth. Um, most of these materials, most of the biomaterials are hydrogels. Um, they can be synthetic or they can be natural based materials. So a good example would be something like collagen, which most of us are probably familiar. So collagen can come from like a fish skin or a rat tail, and they are usually very biocompatible and they help to support cell growth as well. So collagen is a common material. Other materials could be gelatin or alginate, a lot of natural materials that provide sort of the matrix for the cells to grow in. Um, so we make desktop bioprinters that we're hoping to definitely democratize this technology. Kind of a maker bot version of you know, bioprinting. Um, we want to make this technology more accessible to not only researchers but also to students. Um, so we're pushing really heavily on making sure that every classroom or every lab, biotech lab, has a bioprinter. Um, and we're also supporting them by providing um, education and curriculum and training to the teachers so that that can be implemented very easily. So actually when we initially designed our printers, we started sort of with a rip wrap kind of a platform as well. A lot of the components are off the shelf um, and you can definitely, you know, there's a couple of groups who are already using um, rip wrap printers and modifying the tool head. Um, and our tool head is also very simple extrusion base. 
mechanism that is powered by a stepper motor. Um, and there's also obviously other systems that you could use. But yeah, definitely this is something that can be done. Um, you know, you have to kind of understand the firmware and making the necessary modifications to make it a bioprinter versus just a regular in the last five years, I think we have grown a lot as a overall as an industry. A lot of the research that came from academia are now being applied in the industry, which is really great. So you'll start seeing, or you, in the last five years, you start seeing a lot of biotech startups who are focused on industry applications for pharma and even for animal, um, for meat printing, for example, is also a great example. So I think that definitely a lot of the work are now moving for industry applications that are more relevant. Um, so I would say that it's been really great. I think these last five years for bioprinting, it's, it's a growing industry and I'm really excited to see what's, what's to come next. That's just a few of the stories that we picked up at 3D Heels this year. We have a few more to follow up on and you'll be seeing that later this year. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content from Make.